The growing calls across the nation to defund the police. To end policing as we know it. Off the charts violence in New York City. 11 people shot in just eight hours on Sunday. This is Sunday. about the police officers, officers who every single day put on that uniform and they run towards danger when we run away from it. Guns up. Giddy up. What is going on, everyone? Welcome to the Failure to Stop podcast. I am the sexy host. I'm the sexy host, Mike the Cop, and I am joined by Eric Tanzi, who is, uh, I don't know, how would you describe your physical characteristics? Lumpy? Oh, gosh, that was harsh. <laughs> Lumpy? I don't know. You're ripped. You're shredded. Feet I've seen you shirtless a lot of times, and it's Look, I'm you're already, shredded. I'm already, I'm already transy. Now I'm gonna be. <laughs> we did get it. We did get a mail time address to transy at my office. I'll have, <laughs> we'll, we'll share. We'll share. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the office girls downstairs thought about getting uh, getting something addressed to transy. I don't know. What, they're like, oh, just chalk it up to another idiot Mike the cop thing going on upstairs. So somebody sent me a long message, and it said that. Um, Hey man, like you should really have some like self respect for yourself and not allow people to call you transy or make, <laughs> make a joke. It was funny at first, but you should like really have some dignity and respect. Like this person that I've never met, like genuinely cares about how I'm feeling. <laughs> and I just responded with, "It's too late. I've already cut myself." We've got Sean Larkin waiting in the wings to come on here shortly, and he's already probably like, "Oh shit." Uh, they're talking about uh, transsexuality. This I gotta get off of this. I can't be on this show. This is nuts. <laughs> Can't be exposed to this kind of tomfoolery. Uh, notice everyone. <laughs> notice everyone that I am wearing the shirt that I hate uh, because I stand in solidarity with my co-host. He likes this shirt. I think Jimmy did. Jimmy design this. It was my idea. It was your idea, Jimmy, but did Jimmy design it? Jimmy made it work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I'm I'm over here just like I hate this shirt. It sucks. Uh, but we're honest with each other around here. We don't we don't pull punches on failure to stop. No. We just we just go for it. But I stand in solidarity with my fellow uh, the 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 bizarro Elijah the the bizarro UPP what? is on the other side is Jimmy. What's a Seinfeld reference? The bizarro Jerry. Like there's oh, okay. these inverse yeah. characters. So Jimmy is to Eric what Elijah is to me, and. I just support you guys. I love you guys. So I'm wearing your shirt that you love. On failuretostop.com, you can use the code GUGU. Goo goo, baby. Guns up, giddy up. Save some money there. And today's show is brought to you by none other than Ghostbed. Forward slash drinking bros. <laughs> You're ready? We went through this. We have, we have a rundown. We literally went through the show. I wanted to make it <laughs> awkward for you. I wanted to scare you. you it's not awkward like, for me. It's awkward for everybody we listening. Said, we said we were going to we were going to be serious about the ad read today because we have a lot to get through. And we have Sean Larkin on, um, and there wasn't going to be any banter. So I just wanted to just really throw a wrench in that idea and just put banter in there regardless. But uh, no, we are a huge fan of, of Ghostbed, and they've been a loyal sponsor for the Drinking Bros. For the last five years, we are part of the Drinking Bros ne network. Uh, but Ghostbed, uh, our favorite part about Ghostbed, at least my favorite part, Mike, Let's not mess this up this time. It's made in the good old USA. 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 Did we do it? Yeah. I went. You guys yeah. did it. Did it, it, was, did it work? It was perfect, I think. We did. I tried to account um, for the delay. <laughs> the delay that doesn't exist with this 5G network that we're connected to here. Oh, you got uh, vaccinated, huh? Super, Coastman has super comfortable matches <laughs> that last forever. Every mattress has a 20 year warranty. You can buy them. You can try them out for 101 nights, not 98, not 99, but 101, baby. If you don't like it, you can easily return it. No hard feelings, but you won't. Our favorite part about Ghostbed, other than the fact that it's made in the USA, is that if it gets hot where you live, like we do here in Texas, the cooling technology is going to keep you cool at night while staying hard, baby. <laughs> Stay cool while staying hard. Ghostbed offers bundles that you can get everything you need. You don't even have to really think about it. So if you choose from their four mattresses and you pick your bundle, whether you just need a mattress and a frame, or you want it all, baby. I want it all. I want it all. And I want it now. <laughs> <laughs> like the fully pillows and sheets, you can get the best bang for your buck. Right now, go to Ghostbed. They're offering a flash sale of 40% off. 
GhostBed bundles where you get the mattress and adjustable base are 30% off everything. If you use that code, Drinking Bros, D R I N K I N B R O S, ghostbed.com forward slash Drinking Bros, $35 a month, zero down, 0% financing. That's even if you have the credit of an amateur paintball athlete like Lasro Lopez, ghostbed.com forward slash Drinking Bros. Uh, 101 night sleep trial, 0% down, 0% financing, made in the USA, adjustable base, 15 massage modes, 40% off. What are you waiting for? It sleeps so good, it's scary. Ooh. Ooh. Thanks, Ghostbed, for keeping the show alive. Appreciate it. How do you like that, Wolfpack? <laughs> you didn't see that Wolfpack. coming, did you? You didn't, see a, Wolfpack. you didn't see an ad read. What did I say? Nothing. Not I'm Wolfpack. just saying, hey, the Wolfpack. I'm just, I'm just acknowledging yeah. the Wolfpack. Yeah. Did they, All right. did they not see that coming? Did I don't know. I at hope the beginning so. Of the show? We should sell 100 ghost beds for Christmas. What the heck? Ghost beds should want to sponsor this show for life, baby. Let's go. Wolfpack, get a bed. Sleep on it. Love it. Invite us. I don't know. Something like that. I'll sleep with Invite you. Sean Larkin. He's the sexy one. Nominated by many reliable magazines as the sexiest police officer to have ever existed. Let's welcome Sean Larkin to the show. Gentlemen, gentlemen, thank you so much for having me here. What is up, dude? Let me get this thing adjusted. There you go. Yeah, for, I got to say that ghost bed ad, you guys should be buying tons of them. All your listeners should because that is the <laughs> longest ad in podcast history I've ever heard. That thing is, you know, we've, we've got to do some ads for our podcast. And I, I think the three we do a, a show or something combined don't equal that. So that, that in itself is a podcast I just listened to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah our, show, our show is two hours. Um, the first hour is usually us just doing a regular podcast. And the last hour is just, you know, the four or five ad reads that we have. It's just Perfect. ad reads, 15 Perfect. minute ad reads. Hey, and one other thing before we jump into this, honestly, man, guys, thanks for being, uh, you know, having me on here. Uh, but you guys chant in USA, USA. I went to a concert last night here, a kid by the name of Zach Bryan. Um, for anybody out there that's kind of a fan of Yellowstone, some of his songs are in there. Oh, really? Uh, okay. Kind of up and growing kid. He's actually right here from Tulsa, um, uh, just rapidly growing in the country music scene. And, you know, the final thing where they walk off stage, you know, come back on for one last song. You know, everyone's chanting one more song, one more song. And then it led right into USA, USA, that whole place. I mean, it, it was honestly cool as shit. It, it, it was fantastic awesome. to see. Yeah. <laughs> Very, very nice. Uh, you do have a podcast, uh, Cox and Cops. What is it? Ah, that's what? close. There are a couple of those. Uh, <laughs> cop, cocktails and cocktails. Yeah, cocktails and cocktails. So either uh, way, I'm, I'm actually. Yeah, dude. What do you say? You've got the booze right there in front of you. I'm actually in my little home office studio thing where all my booze is stashed at. But uh, yeah, a buddy of mine by the name of Howard Doss. Um, he's actually a nurse. Both of us are big bourbon fans. And, you know, who doesn't love hearing cop stories? I mean, every party anybody goes to, if you're a police officer, people want to come ask about the job. They want to talk about it. And we just kind of came up with this concept last year. And uh, um, just a way for us to talk to other cops across the country, let them tell some of their stories and, and have a drink while we do it. Love it, man. Uh, Look, when I saw you, I said, that's a that's a bourbon guy. I can already, oh, I can already pinpoint him as such. He's a <laughs> bourbon guy. Just like every other dude in the entire country. Don't get Tansy started, Sean. He's going to go down this road with you today, I'm sure. He wants to talk about the cocktail portion of your show. He owns yep. a distillery. He's a yep. nerd. He did introduce me because I'm a bourbon guy, too, like every other man in America. Of course, of course. Um, and he did introduce me at his distillery to a, uh, a rum old-fashioned. Okay. And I got to say... I, I really, really liked it. And I had a rum. You do something crazy, uh, and I, I can't get nerdy with it because I don't know. You You showed me at your distillery something where it was like there's a process to take rum, which is basically flavorless when it's distilled right, and you can make it into what you want, right? So you can give it an oaky cask kind of flavor. It's pressurized, and then oh, yeah. I drank it neat, and it tasted kind of like oaky like a bourbon would, but it's rum. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that you're like kind of close, but not even close at all. But uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I do you, have I rum that, that is in a, uh, that is aging in oak barrels. But you know, rum was the original OG spirits of the world of the United States. Uh, bourbon was kind of like a thing that they had to tax rum 300 uh, percent in the 1830s to get people to even start trying to to drink the whiskey. Um, because people just preferred rum over whiskey for that long. But, um, and that there's a whole history to that. But uh, 
in bourbon, the barrel is the star of the show and everybody loves the barrel, right? Um, they, they don't care about the, the distiller or anything like that. It's all about the blender and the who's got the barrels. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas like other spirits in the world, the spirit is on the ways on the shoulder of the, the, the distiller and the maker. And I think that's why I appreciate all the other spirits in the world, except for bourbon. I do drink a lot of bourbon though, Sean, I, I, I'm not like anti bourbon or anything like that. It's just, it's a really funny kind of like a trend. I was at a bourbon bar yesterday. It was huge. I was doing a rum tasting. I'm in Florida. That's why there's no studio behind me. Um, but it was, uh, they had this massive bourbon tasting. They almost had like, it was at Gasper's liquor shop and they had like 20 something bourbons out. And I was the only rum. And every guy that came through my, uh, my little tasting table was like, yeah, I'm a, I'm more of a bourbon guy, but I'll oh, try yeah. your rum. And I was like, if I hear one more person say I'm a bourbon guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was like Captain Jack Sparrow, man. You know, that's where you talked about the rum being around, you know, back in the pirate era. So I'm late to the bourbon game. It was just kind of all these guys that I hung around with and, uh, some of the people that were involved with live PD were into it. And that's how I got into it. I actually, I worked for Anheuser-Busch in college. I drove a beer truck. Oh, wow. I was a beer guy up until the last yeah. few years, but yeah. Yeah, it's man, really you cool. were probably, you probably were out there uh, shirtless. I, I see you in like your blue work pants, shirtless, slinging cases of beer, sweating. Uh, I'm getting, I'm getting all worked up just thinking about it. Well, think of it. Okay, so yeah, Lieutenant Dangle from uh, you know Reno 911. <laughs> it, I had those shorts, but we did have to wear a shirt. But I did like the crop top Brian Bosworth look, you know. So it was something like that. Hey, man, how did you get your people? Were already asking some questions or what they wanted to ask you in in the chat, and they the the main thing that I've seen so far is okay. How did you get the name Sticks? Did you have skinny legs growing up, or is that uh, how, how did that happen? Well, the skinny legs are still skinny, I promise. But. Um, it, it, am I free reign here? I can cuss and whatnot. Yeah, you can say whatever you want. Okay. So I was doing my internship uh, here in the Tulsa Police Department, kid in college, my last year of college. And I rode with these same two officers every night. Uh, and that's I, I, that was my internship. I literally just did a ride along every Friday and Saturday night. I had to put in a certain amount of hours during the semester. And I got to know these two guys really well. Um, they were in a unit called Footbeat, which was a very active, you know, jump out boys type of, type of, uh, type of unit. And this is in the late 90s. You know, gangsters were everywhere. You know, they, they they dressed out in colors and just stood out openly selling dope. You know, a little different than it is now. So I got really comfortable riding with these guys. And one night uh, they had gotten in a car chase with a carload of gangsters. And one of the guys jumps out the car. And I was 21 years old and I just jumped out chasing the guy. And I had a vest that they let me wear underneath my shirt. And I had a flashlight because it was, it was probably expired like seven it, years. Expired. Oh, yeah, was, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and it was. Yeah, for sure. Um, and actually, it really was. It was one of their older vets. <laughs> yeah. and so I chase this guy down and I, I tackle him and catch him. Well, I have no handcuffs, no gun, no pepper spray, no radio, anything. And the other officer by the guy named, by the name of Mike Eckert catches up to me and basically gets the guy handcuffed. And he chewed my ass out. And he was like, hey, man, good job. But you can't do that, fuck stick. And <laughs> so, so, so he called me fuck stick. Well, when I get into the police academy about a year later, he is one of the part-time firearms instructors out at the range. And oh, yeah. he just calls me Stick or Stick Boy the whole time <laughs> for, for Fuck Stick. And then it just other officers heard it, not even knowing the, the you know where it came from. Then I get out on the streets and all the gangsters, the bad guys. I spent my whole career in one part of the city, and they heard other cops just calling me Stick, Stick, Stick. And it just kind of, you know, how gangster lingo goes. And pretty soon it was Stick, Sticks, and it just kind of morphed into that. <laughs> so, it, so you could say it just it's it sticks. It, the name it sticks. sticks. The name it sticks. Stuck. Stuck. Yeah, it sticks. Stuck. Being that you <laughs> asked, um, like what you could say or like how you could say it. Like we know that you're big network TV guy. Got the live. PD oh, whatever, man. For <laughs> the podcast. Do you have to like curve what you say because no. like you don't want to lose your opportunities, or are you just like free range with for, like free reign with it? No, I'm free reign with it. Um, you know, it, our stuff is put on, it's called Long Crime Network, which is a small cable channel that's out there across the country. So, our, our, you know, it's on YouTube, obviously, you know, all the same platforms you guys are for the podcast as well. Um, and that was one of the things when we were going to do it that I was, you know, like, listen, I want to be able to talk the way guys talk, you know, and, and the way I just kind of envisioned it. I was like, this is happy hour. It's when anybody gets off of work, goes to the bar, has a drink and bullshits. Um, yeah. one of the things I do try to do with my podcast that differs from, from yours and some of the other ones, um, is, you know, I kind of stay away from the political side of the policing thing because there are other ones like yours or the news networks. There's just a lot of other ones out there that already do cover it. And I want to be redundant and just do this, you know, do what we're everybody doing the same thing. 
Um, yeah, you don't want to be a, you don't want to be a bourbon guy. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, <laughs> you whatever. You want to be a bourbon guy like everybody. Man, that was I'm deep, just, man. That's good. I, Mike, I see why you have why, why you got Eric on here, man. So he's a sharp guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, I I'm glad that <clears throat> I was never. I never had to. Even when I was doing social media early on with uh, going back to Vine and, and really early Instagram stuff and videos. and MySpace. Uh, I, I hit MySpace, yeah. <laughs> Me and Tom actually just hung out last week. Um, so I've, I've never <clears> – <throat> people are surprised by this. I never censored myself ever. I never had a moment for me where I was like, well, I can't say that because I'm working or I'm still on the job or whatever – because you were still you were doing live PD while you were still a Tulsa officer, right? Yeah, that's, that's correct. Nuts. I mean, essentially, I was working. <laughs> so a lot of people, you know, kind of came into the live PD viewing late and just you know saw me there in studio as a co-host. And I actually started out on on the street on the show. I was you know the the very first season, first episode, they rolled around with us. It was just two hours on a Friday night, and as the viewership grew it turned into a three hours on friday night and they were like hey we're gonna try a saturday night and see how it goes and then from then on it was every friday and saturday three yeah. hours live each time um and you know and eventually i did end up in new york and it was just a flute deal right place right time never had ambition on being on tv or anything like that um but yeah i worked in tulsa monday through thursday you know as a cop got off work at uh 4 30 caught a 5 30 flight to new york did live PD Friday, Saturday, and flew back Sunday. And I did that every week, you know, year round for almost three years. Oh my gosh, and it was, dude. It was, it, yeah, dude, it was a grind. Um, what did, uh, what did, did I, that time change make you your it's bitch or what? Like back I mean, and it's, forth? It's only one hour difference. Um, oh, really? You know, yeah, just a one hour difference. Oh, okay. Well, that's um, not too bad. You know, sleep on Sundays <laughs> was brutal. I'll be honest. Because, you know, we finished a show at midnight New York time. Um, every Friday after the show, everybody stays around and, and has cocktails. Um, there and you know so you leave there some nights one thirty two o'clock in the morning um and then saturday night after the show you kind of get out of there pretty quick by the time you get to the hotel shower and all that you know it's one one thirty in the morning and then you're getting up in the morning and heading to the airport literally at 6 30 i was trying to catch an eight o'clock flight home um you know i was a single dad and just had to get back home to to my kid you know he's a teenager at the time but you got a grocery shop do laundry and go back to work monday morning so sundays were that they were a grind Wow. What did, uh, what did internal affairs, what was your conversation like with IA when this whole thing Man, started? Cause it, like they, they had to have called you in and been like, yo, homie, let's talk real quick. So when the opportunity, obviously our department, as I said, we were on there from the get go. Um, and then when the opportunity came to kind of be a, a you know, the a guest in New York city and when it turned into a contractual issue, the way our department looked at it was no different than cops that work part times at a bank or, you know, you're working at a, an event or whatever, something like that. It was a separate deal. Um, they would not allow me to wear a Tulsa police logo. That's one thing I was told. So the collared shirts I wore every time was the Fraternal Order of Police um, for, for Tulsa. So it has a oh. o state of Oklahoma and it says Tulsa on it, but it's just our <laughs> FOP logo. And so that's what I wore every single time. And I, I mean, outside of other FOP people, nobody knew the difference. Yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Nice. Well, hey, listen, we're going to we're going to turn you into uh, a third co-host with us for a little bit here. And uh, we're going to I want to play this first. Let's play the first TikTok video of get this cop getting burned. And if this if this elicits any stories for either of you guys of comebacks that are, or you getting roasted while you were at work, let, let, we can share those stories. But play that play that video for us, Elijah. The cop laughed. <clears throat> Hey, be believe it or not, I wanted to be a cop at one point. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. What changed your mind? I wasn't gay. <laughs> 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 I, the cop chuckles right on the video. He's like, what are you going to do? You can't, are you going to get mad? Like, there are probably two kinds of cops. The guys that would get really pissed that somebody did that to them. Oh, yeah. And then most normal cops who would be like, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna give you the points on that one because I got nothing like that. That's excellent. You guys ever get roasted when you get when you were working? Oh that's man, funny. it's just yeah, it's part of the game, you know. And 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 that's the thing. And and not to rehash it, but like I said I my literally my whole career was spent just working around you know street gangs pretty much, and that's just part of that world, you know. And you've got to be able to to take it and give it back. And 
you know, if not, those guys will run all over you. So I can't think of one in particular, you know, I mean, I thought I was pretty good at talking shit, uh, you know, back to guys. So, but that, I, that one right there was good. I'll be honest. <laughs> that one right there was good. Yeah, I, I, my favorite is like when you, I would like pull over and I, I work kind of the same area you did um, a high gang area my whole career, but uh, pull the guy over one night and I was like, Hey man, where are you, uh, where are you coming from tonight? And he was like, your mom's house. Like, oh yeah. Oh wow. yeah. Fair enough. Well played, homie. Well, yeah. played. How, how was she? How was she? Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like you might want to get home a little bit. <laughs> hey, was tested. that you? Is is that you taking all the milk out of the fridge? Is that yeah. why I gotta keep going back? But, uh, uh, yeah, somebody I, told I, me I, one uh, time. Oh, go ahead. Oh no, I was gonna say I just I liked roasting them. I, I like if you I had one gang guy, a couple of gang dudes sitting on the the curb with their colors, and and the one guy was like. Hey man, can I stretch my? Uh, can I uncross my legs? Are starting to cramp up. I'm like, no, you gotta, you gotta leave your legs crossed. And he was like, can I scoot over because the the ants are getting on me. And then uh, he asked something else, and I said, hey dude, aren't you a, uh, aren't you a fucking blood gang member? Yeah. He was like, all of his homies. I was like, aren't you, aren't you a blood gang member? I thought you guys were supposed to be like fucking tough because you've done nothing. <laughs> A wine like a little pussy since you've been sitting here <laughs> you're a blood gang member act like it and his boys were like no way uh, you know and, and <laughs> yeah that, that's kind of my thing when the guys started just you know when they were bitching and moaning whatever it was just about just the stopping itself and i would say man you, you're sensitive you're one of them sensitive gangsters aren't, aren't you you're one of the sensitive guys and then dude it just sets them off man you know just that that was kind of my go-to line for that stuff <laughs> Um, I got told that I looked like a low budget Doogie Hauser in a uniform one time. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I'm like, uh, I don't, I don't remember what my comeback was. I don't remember if I had one. I, you know, it's just like it, it, some of those times it's like, maybe you, maybe I gave him a fist bump. I, I'll probably be like, yeah, all right, man. Yeah. That's, that's a good one. I'll see you next go round, but I'll, right. I'll take, I'll take the L this round boys. <laughs> it's yeah, uh, yeah. it happens. Uh, we got to check in too with our wolf pack in the south, uh, the le- our, our wolf pack leaders. So Sean, we call our our listeners the wolf pack, and there's a guy on, on TikTok uh, named Scott Rogers, uh, who may or may not be actually uh, a viewer of the, of the show. We don't know, but he he puts out content on TikTok that we we keep up with. So let's see what nice. let's see what's up with Scott Rogers. I actually don't know what videos Elijah picked today, so. Hello everyone. It's not about your destination. It's about the journey you go through. I'm on my journey and I'm just, no. But anyway, (laughs) still on my journey. You gotta know where you come from before you get to your destination. But anyway, talk to y'all guys later. (laughs) Peace out. Yeah, yeah. Dang, that, was, drop- Ohio that was deep. Oh, here we go. We got someone that needs their need y'all's help with bills and stuff. Help her out. Let me know what y'all think, and I'll tell you their names. <laughs> their names. <laughs> Wolfpack, you better get to Ohio. There's people that need your help. Pay some bills Wolfpack. in Ohio. Pay and, my uh, bills. Shit, I'm gonna call them and say I need my bills paid. <laughs> you and me <laughs> both. Need to reach out, man. That's awesome. <laughs> That's Scott Rogers, and uh, he uh, he often calls the Wolf Pack to assemble. And oh, there's one more. What do we got? Oh, it's better be I'm a good one. Still the VP of the Wolf Pack. So whoever says I'm out, they're out. Well, so leave me alone. <laughs> well, there you have it. Like, well, if Wolfpack, he's the VP, he's the I want to know who the president is. Yeah, I don't know. This is this this was that is a very. Uh, a question that's going to burden my my mind yeah. uh, until I find out who who is the president of the Wolfpack. Lastro Lopez in the comments will probably declare himself. Uh, <laughs> Craig Craig Delasky <laughs> says, "Why do I always join late for these?" And this guy is always on my screen. I'm assuming you mean Scott Rogers instead of like me or Eric or certainly it's Sean. Destiny, <laughs> it's destiny, homie. Oh my gosh! So, uh, can you see what? Do you see the screen, Sean? I do. I'd say I'm pretty, imp- you know, obviously I run a podcast or have a podcast. I mean, you guys have got Chiron's popping up, you know, at the bottom of the screen there with different things. This is, this is kind of nice making our, our low budget thing look pretty bad. <laughs> well, we're going to, I'm going to add insult to injury. I'm going to have you read our reviews. So oh. what? <laughs> <laughs> let me get my glasses here. Look at it. 
they spell my name wrong. So if you see an R in my name, there's no R there. Just say it without. without <laughs> no, it's transy. Oh, I, I got you. What do we got here? Uh, happened to stumble across this podcast and have been hooked since. I've already went back and listened to every single episode. And now I sit and impatiently wait for the next episode. Your guys' chemistry is addicting, to say the least. I'm just a regular, old, boring citizen. But hearing a cop's perspective on current events is something I didn't know I... <laughs> and it's extended. So I get to fill <laughs> in my own it's little... A, it's a cliffhanger. I needed. It's a cliffhanger. I needed. Yeah. He also knows who the president of the Wolfpack is. and we, we're, we got to find this guy. Go. Get that guy on here. Uh, the only t- the only two men besides Jack Mandeville, I look forward to penetrating my ear holes every week <laughs> through my Raycon earbuds. Awesome show. <laughs> Keep up the good work. This show isn't even brought. This episode's not even brought to you by Raycon, but we still give the love. <laughs> Give a plug. I literally am putting on my glasses here. As I was crawling through the vast and barren desert of podcasts in dire search of pool of water, <laughs> Of a podcast that is both entertaining and inform- informative without media bias, I saw a glimmer, a bright reflection of light in the distance. I rushed over to the reflection, only to find, I'm sorry, only to find it was the sun reflecting off of Mike's head <laughs> as, he would lay, as he was laying on his ghost bed. See, dude, our ad reads work so well that people drop our ads in our own review. That's impressive. Oh, my gosh. Uh Sean, talk to us about uh, how things came to an end on Live PD, um, sure. and and what's what's the hope of the future at all for for a reboot? Um, obviously, you've got a massive fan base of people that are like begging for the show to come back. So how did, how did it end, and what, where was your connection? And in in you know. What did you know when and how did it all go down and where is it sure. going? Yeah, you know, so so Live PD, it, it did turn into the number one cable television show every Friday and Saturday night. And some nights it was the number one television show uh, out of even network TV. <clears throat> um, you know, it was bringing in two, 2.1 million viewers an episode. So it was a huge <sighs> hit. Um, you know, that's three hours live every Friday and Saturday. And every March... Let me back up. The show went on year round. We took off for Christmas. Um, we didn't even take off for Thanksgiving anymore. We took, you know, like Fourth of July weekend off and things like that. But every year in March, we took two weekends off. And it was because, you know, March Madness was on TV. Everybody's going to watch March Madness. You don't want to compete with those type of ratings. It gave an opportunity for all the crews that are out on the road to, to have some time off and get back home to their families. So coincidentally, the you know, the pandemic was starting up at the exact same time, which had nothing to do with the show getting off. But I was in New York uh, doing the show. I was there for a week straight because we had also filmed PD cam from the same studio. And then we had a live PD on the weekend. Literally watched the city of New York just start emptying out during that week I was there. Fly yeah. home. Uh, we have our two weeks off. And then because of the pandemic, we're not going back to studio. We do it remotely from home, which was an experience in itself. And they were kind of, you know, we didn't know if we were ever going to get back to New York just because of the, you know, the pandemic going on. And then George Floyd happened. And the incident with George Floyd, um, you know, they had discussed how we were going to acknowledge it. Because one of the things we did on the show, we just covered live police work. It was like, hey, here's policing in America. You you can sit at home on your couch and judge it for what it is. And and we're going to show you small rural areas. We're going to show you big, you know, urban areas, the difference of what goes on. And, you know, there was discussion of, hey, obviously, this is a nationwide thing. You know, are we going to even make a comment on it? Because we didn't comment on anything else. And that involved, you know, other incidents that had happened. We didn't comment about police officers that were shot and killed in the line of duty. Um, You know, we were just trying to say, hey, here's here's the police profession. So far as we knew, everything was a go. We were going to go back on on uh, Friday night for the show. And then Thursday night, we get a conference call from our producer. Um, and not to say that was out of the ordinary. You know, you always had a pre-production meeting before every show anyways. And since we were doing things from home, we were doing, you know, these type of deals from the phone. <clears throat> and we get on the phone call. And when it was myself, Dan Abrams, and Tom Morris, along with the producer, and he literally just in a very quiet voice just said, it's done. And so we thought – we had had discussions that maybe the show was not going to come like they're going to take some time off or until maybe after like 4th of July, you know, a few weeks, let things kind of simmer down and then we'll bring, put the show back on. 
And that and we were like, what? And they said, yeah, it, it's done. And it was a decision, nobody to do with live PD, way up the food chain. Um, mm -hmm. You know, just like everything else that kind of got canceled or, you know, that, that, that people went after that had to do with law enforcement. Don't and you think it that's was it? Don't you think that's wild or like, were you disappointed in your network for like, for example, like I was down trying to sell my rum. I'm always trying to hustle my rum and sure. out of town like I am today. And I went into a bar and um, was doing my sales pitch. And the rep I was with was like, not only does he own and make this rum, but he was also a former uh, law enforcement officer. And the guy goes, oh, well, let's just leave that part out. Oh, yeah. And I was, yep. I was like, excuse me, sir. And he was like, let's leave yep. that part out. That's a touchy subject. I said, no, it's not. It's a noble no, profession. I said, matter of fact, you know what? I don't even think my rum would do well in this shop anyway. So I think we're yeah. done here. And the rep was like, dude, whoa, holy shit. Like struck a nerve. And I said, yeah, because for me, that's zero tolerance. Did you feel the same way when the network was like, yeah, we're not coming across this? Yeah. You know, and there were a lot of people, obviously social media was a big part of the show. At least Twitter was. And, and, and you know, I was kind of new to the social media game. I kind of got involved with it because of the show. Um, I'm kind of private in a lot of things in my personal life. Like, you know, I hope most cops are, but I still, we had contracts with the network. We actually had a contract, each of us as individuals, we had one that didn't end until February, the final year. And part of your contract is, is kind of like, you know, what you're allowed to say publicly, what you can talk about. Right. And so we couldn't comment publicly about it. Everybody in my interpersonal circle obviously knew how I felt about it. Um, once our contract had, had ended, and found out basically there was no hopes of the show coming back. Um, you know, part of that show or that family of everybody that worked on it, I'm talking from the production assistants that are getting people coffee to the mm -hmm. executive producer, to the director, to management for the network. Um, everybody knew each other. And I think from my understanding, it was that's pretty unique in the television world. Um, obviously, it's my only experience I've ever had with it. But it, it got... Once the contract expired, I was able to have phone calls and uh, expressed my displeasure, um, you know, very personal. And that's what I expressed is, listen, I know there's a lot of people that are out of job, just, you know, part of this show. I said, but of the three of us that are up on camera, you know, between Dan, Tom and myself, I'm an active duty gun toting cop still right now. And, you know, it's a slap in the face. And, and I mean, that, those were actually my exact words. I said, this is a slap in the face to me, to the profession, to the viewership, you know, and stuff like that. It's extremely disappointing, um, you know, for, for something we didn't do wrong. We as in the law, enfor law enforcement profession, nobody part of that show did wrong to see it get yanked off. They were very disappointing. Now, Mike, to go back to your question about, you know, coming back, it's the number one thing I'm asked, you know, pretty much anytime you run into somebody, when's it coming back? I miss it. Um, you know, I think it ended the weekend. Of, I think the Floyd thing happened May 25th of last year, if I remember correctly. Um, so, you know, we're, we're a year and a half past that now. Mm -hmm. Um, I do know, and this is kind of the generic answer. I'm not part of any of the conversations. I anticipate when it's brought back. Cause I still think it will be, uh, I'll just get a phone call and go, Hey man, can you be in New York on this day? And that, that's kind of how it'll happen. I know there are active negotiations that are going on. I don't know the networks. I know it's not with A and E that part. That's what's going to be my next question. No. It, let's let, uh, in a no. in a theoretical world, if if you got that call and they were like, "Hey, A and E is going to bring it back," would you stay on or would you not stay on because of how that all kind of played out? You know, it, it's because I think it's important for the show, and, it, and it's listen, it, it's a job. People, you know, talk about you know, uh, you know, are you? Me going to New York, it was a job. I was paid for it. I was compensated, yes. Um, and it's not about the the money. But I think that show's so important to get back on there to show the job. And I, I know for a fact it never will be on A&E. That's a done deal. I know that from both sides. That is yeah. completely separated. But to answer your question, I think it would probably have to be some some serious discussions because of – you know, I can't get into details about my conversations I had with yeah. them. Um, you know, I made some appearances on another show that, um, uh, that, you know, their live rescue show. Even after the George Floyd thing, I got brought back into that show. Um, and, and that didn't work out because of differences that I had. And, and I'll be honest, I turned down very, very good money to be on that show because of my disagreement with the way things they handled it. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah. That was I don't not know, very uh, 
Not very LeBron James of you. <laughs> no, you know, no, yeah. Not, you're next, you know, next. You're next. Next. <laughs> next. Yeah. I love it, man. I, I think that I think there's a demand for it. I think that um I think that the show and and I think I told you this before. I I got exposed to the show and then I was doing live live PD. I was riding on your coattails on YouTube, like doing live live PD commentary, making sarcastic snide sure. remarks about whatever. Um, yeah, I have to I have to go back. I wonder how many of those I saved on YouTube because I probably I was I probably roasted you and Dan a bunch of times too for whatever you were wearing or saying or what I don't know who knows. Um, I have to go back and, and see see what I said, but uh, you got to bring it back so that I can uh, I can do the live live PD again. Absolutely, you know, and, and one of the things that just talking about roasting it, and you know how our profession is, and everybody thinks they're the the gift of police work or whatever agency they're working for is better than the next and that type of stuff. And yeah, so when the show first started, um, when I was actually out on the street in the beginning of it. That's one of the things that, you know, I was concerned about was one, how the in-studio people, what they would comment on, let's say my officer safety tactics, you yeah. know, what, you know, how I was handling the car stop. Cause I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a fucking robot when I stop these guys, but I'm, I'm very comfortable in the gang world, but I'm also, I like to think my officer safety tactics are very good, but I'm not paranoid either. Mm -hmm. Um, and so then when I was on set, that's something I obviously never did. I never Listen, I saw stuff from some agencies out there. Uh, I was like, what the fuck are you guys doing? You know, just as far as tactical <laughs> yeah, positions sure. they were at on uh, like barricaded <laughs> yeah. subjects or, you know, stopping a car with gang. I mean, I know one incident, there was a car stop that had three gangsterish looking guys in the car, at least. And the, the officer just flat out turns their back. And then the other officer even has to tell that officer, hey, turn around and focus on that. But, um, you know, I know there's, you know, other cops that uh, bad talk me, bad talk the show probably about it. And kind of what I've always said is like, listen, you're telling me one, if you didn't have the opportunity to get up there and do it, or two, you don't have the balls to get up, balls or the knowledge to get up there and talk about, you know, all the different things that go on. Yeah, I think that's a that's a normal, a normal thing that happens with humans is sure. there's a there's a sense of uh, of jealousy and judgment from afar. Don't know yeah. a thing about you. Don't know your motivation. Don't know your experience. They see you on a screen and they make all the judgments in the world Absolutely. about who you are, what you think, and they kind of just fill in the blanks and make all sorts of assumptions about people. Absolutely. It's like the, Absolutely. It's like the one fan that we have that, that thinks I'm a left wing nut and just post it all over the place that I'm just this left wing <laughs> crazy person. And I'm not even left I'm not even left wing. <laughs> so no, you know, he's convinced and, and Eric, that I am. Yeah, and I'll say that, like, just, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm not here to, quote, unquote, defend Dan Abrams, but he gets hammered with that stuff about being some left-wing, you know, woke person. And if anybody who follows him or listens to his social media or he's now got a primetime show on, a, on – it's the old WGN cable network. It's now called News Nation. And he does a five nights a week primetime show called Dan Abrams Live, and I do hits on there two or three times a week talking law enforcement-related stuff. And – if you watch just one episode, he he does nothing but praise law enforcement, huge supporter of it. And people just here he was hosting the show. And granted, he doesn't know our profession. You know, he, right. he's in a he's in a, a guy with a law degree that just happens to be in television for his entire life. So he has no experience in law enforcement, but he's a huge supporter. And people still just hammer him <laughs> because he is like a, you know, a lifelong Manhattan New Yorker. Um, so, yeah, you're right. Eric, people just make these assumptions and have absolutely no clue who you really are. All right. How much time do you have left, Sean? Because I don't want to abuse your time. So. Man, so I'm looking here. I've, uh, I've got to be off with you guys in 20 minutes, and I'm going to do a shameless little plug on here. I'm actually taking off to Nashville here in a little bit. Um, there's a – Eric, you'll like this. It's called Nashville Barrel Company. Um, they're <laughs> kind of like a craft barreling group that buys – they buy bourbon. They do barrel picks from MGP and different places like that, and they kind of craft it their own stuff. But we're partnering up with them. Uh, I'm doing two podcasts there this weekend, two great guests I'm going to have. But what I'm excited about is we are we did a barrel pick there a couple months ago with these guys, and we named it Blue Line Bourbon, and we partnered up with the National Fallen Officers Foundation, and we're going to be selling bottles directly from there. there are, people can also get them online. We're selling for $100 a bottle with $25 of every bottle going to the National Fallen Officers Foundation. So – Awesome. Point being, I'm, I got 20 minutes. I got to get off of here and catch a flight to Nashville. 
I love hey, Nashville it. Nashville's well, awesome. We were uh, we were in Nashville with Drinking Bros not too long ago. We had a great time. We got to hang out with Kid Rock and John Daly, and and just Nashville is just such a it's a like a it's an awesome town, man. It's, it's like miniature Vegas. It's like I'd say it's like a mini Vegas, man. You can only do it for one or two nights when you get down that strip and party like that. But it's a good time. Well, you I should, feel like uh, Nashville should... is like all the same place. I have to. I need to go to Nashville with somebody that I guess can can teach me Nashville because when I was there, I felt like. Every bar is the same. Every bar is the same. There's people, uh, aspiring country musicians singing the same country songs and there's the same American fair, you know, Southern food. Everyone's got Nashville hot chicken or whatever. Every, you just order the same beer, the same drink, and you just go from thing to thing. And so if you're bar hopping, it's like, it's a weird deja vu. And you're like, was I just here? I think I was just here. And you're like, no, I'm way, I'm a mile down the road. Uh, this is the same place. I don't know. That's 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 how my Nashville you experience just went. I drink know. enough in Nashville, so like when you're in Nashville, you should probably just not know where you're at the entire time. Like, oh, yeah. I, 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 I guess maybe. Uh, well, let's let's hit our Cardo Max read, uh, Eric, and 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 thank our next sponsor, Cardo Max, for helping this show be a reality. And then, guys, in the comments that are watching live, drop your questions in. If you've got burning questions that you want us to make sure we address with sticks here, get them into the comments section. And we'll have the underpaid producer uh, slap those up on the screen here before the 20 minute deadline is up. And then I know Eric's got a few more questions for you as well. So, Cardo Max, baby. Cardo Max. And I don't know what it is about Cardo Max, but for whatever reason, everybody that buys Cardo Max and uses our promo code, they love to take pictures of it and send it to us. And I'm not even ashamed. like, I love it. I'm not even going to shame you for it. I, I enjoy every single picture. I don't know what it is about Cardo Max, but like, I love the pictures and they're all like super funny, like dogs, like with Cardo Max in their mouth or nurses with it in their masks. It's, it's all, I don't know why you guys are all doing it or why it's like a trend, but I, Hey, look, I'm all in on it, but it is that time of year when you wake up with a cough, sore throat or other annoying symptoms for no reason other than it got a little colder outside. That's why you need Cardo Max immune booster to keep your body at 100%. Cardo Max immune booster uses all natural ingredients that increases the body's ability to adapt to stressors, increase muscle endurance and provide other immune system benefits. Benefits. Owned and operated by former Navy SEAL, and even cooler than being a Navy SEAL, he's a fellow drinking bro, Sean Matson. Cardo Max Immune Booster comes in an easy to mix liquid packet in two great flavors orange and my favorite watermelon. It tastes great, the ingredients are healthy, and it's made by a veteran and a drinking bro. November 15th through the 19th, Immune Booster plus Cardo Max, uh, and Cardo Max has a new hydration line. Yes, you can use our promo code for that too. For a limited time, you get 30% off your next. For orders, Codermax is offering uh, failure to stop an exclusive offer. Offer at thirty percent off your next four orders. Go to Cardomax.com. Use the promo code Wolfpack. That is C A R D O M A X dot com. Use the promo code Wolfpack. Get thirty percent off your next four orders. That's Cardomax.com. Helping you achieve your max. Boom. Love it. Hey, Love one it. more thing about Nashville before we do move on. Uh, John Rich. You guys familiar with him from Big and Rich? Um, his name's John Rich. He's a Nashville guy, but he's got a bar right there on the main strip called Redneck Riviera. And for anybody that is police officer, military, or your supporter of both, man, you go in there, entire walls are just, just splattered with law enforcement patches from all over the place. And he's got a sign outside that says, we proudly serve our men and women in uniform. So uh, anybody that's a fan, like I said, of, of, of our profession or the, or the military, man, you're down there, go spend a dollar in there and have a beer. Love I love a good, uh, I love a good patch wall. Uh, I, I'm always, I don't know, like I get a little bit motivated when I go into a place and they've got a patch wall. I always find myself that the Hodge twins actually visited mm -hmm. my distillery and the two of them kind of ventured over to the patch wall. So like even somebody like as cool as you or as cool as the Hodge twins, like even that it's like a bug zapper. It's like, you have to go look at the patch wall sure. to see the patch. And like you'd think maybe citizens think that if you've seen one patch, you've seen them all, but to us, Right, like it's a thing. Like it's the, like I don't know if it's nostalgic or what it is, but it's like, man, let's go see what patches are on that wall. Yeah, well, it's also you know, man, and and not to sound cheesy, but you're like, you know, a lot of my brothers, quote unquote, have, have been here as well, you know, and you're kind of just partaking yeah. and sharing in that same type yeah. of thing. So it, it's it's it huge. Cool. Yep. And listen, we wanted to like speaking of Nashville and going to Nashville. Mike and I are talking about doing like a morale tour, um, maybe after the holidays, maybe getting into the spring. But we're going to visit some of these. Uh, bigger agencies, these kind of harder hit agencies that have, have gone through some like crazy turmoil and, and just kind of host an event at a local bar and, um, and hang out. And we're, we're calling it the, uh, the morale tour. And uh, maybe we That's can meet awesome. up with you in your hometown. Maybe to. we can or something. Let's, let's do it. Come see the 918. 
<laughs> what was the last row Lopez question? He, this is a, I'm going to, I'm going to open up the questions to Sean. With some, I know, but this is a funny one. Hey sticks. Have you ever mutually beat this mutually beat the <laughs> shit out of a perp instead of going straight for an arrest similar to the scene and end of watch? I don't know what he's talking about. First of all, fantastic movie. Love that movie. End of watch. Yeah. Man. At the end of it's a tear jerker. Uh, and I also got to say the word perp cracks me up because <laughs> I had never heard I'm not joking, no. man. I had never heard anybody use the word perp. Nobody uses it. Until I went to – everybody in New York uses it. I'll tell you that. When I really? was there, and that was – yeah, one of the first episodes, they're like, hey, so how do you catch a perp? And I'm like, a perp? I said, we call them fucking bad guys. They're, they're, we just call them – they're fucking bad guys. I call them turds or scrotes. Or maggots, you know, <laughs> whatever it is. Yeah. And I was like, I think of like, you know, back in like the 1920s, you know, the, the mask with a bag of money. Like, ah, hey, Bugsy, you know, that's like a perp. Um, yeah. So no. I've How about this one? You ever me. hear unsub? Nope, never heard of that one. What is it? Yeah. Unsub. Unsub. Uh, yeah. What is unsub? Uh, they use it all the time. And uh, sounds like a order. strange sexual contract. No. Hey, you know what? Uh, uh, kind of along those lines, I ran into some unidentified uh, some Sanford... subject. Unidentified subject. Nope, not that one. We're very, you know, just drop real, real plain, wordage. plain speak. Plain speak. Yeah. Uh, but you know, San Francisco PD. Um, right before I retired, I was at a training session for, uh, for, for, for this gun related deal and some SFPD guys were there and we were just talking about the differences on how easy we can get search warrants for homes and, you know, that fast and things like that. They were saying there in San Francisco, they can't tell people to sit down on the curb because it's degrading right. and, you know, like sit your ass down on the curb type of deal. Just... Other thing they can't refer to convicted felons. As felons, they, the term that they have to refer to them as person impacted by the criminal justice system. Swear. <laughs> swear. Swear. Absolutely blew me what? away. It's not That's that the they... criminal justice system has been impacted by them. Yep. It's the system has impacted. Oh, that makes sense. Yep. Dead serious. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, things things are different in different places. I know, like, I mean, the language I know they use in New York, they, they say forthwith. That's, a, like, a real thing from, like, NYPD Blue. Uh, not NYPD Blue. Um, uh, Blue. Blue Bloods, you hear like I need a bus forthwith, like they actually nope. say that in the city. Yeah, forthwith, yeah. Like, forthwith. What? It's an old hold- holdover. Like I would never ask that, but yeah. policy policy wise, I remember where I where I cut my teeth on policing. You know, you would get everybody out of a vehicle and sit them down. They all got sure, you know, and and most of the time they would get cuffed or whatever else. You're just sitting them down. Why? Well, there's one of me and five of them, and I, I got shit to do. So that's how we. That's how kind of how uh, would be not uncommon at all. And then I switched agencies, and uh, one of one of the first times uh, on going through the new FTO process because they made me go through the formality of you know the FTO and you know stop a car with four or five people in it. I get them all out. I'm cuffing them all. I, <laughs> I'm sitting them on the curb, and my FTO is like just watching this unfold. He's like, what? the fuck are you doing we are in front of a toys r us <laughs> what, what is happening right now i'm like i don't know uh, uh there's four of them <laughs> like i just i'm i'm evening out the odds i don't know right, I don't, right. this is what he's like you can't do that i'm like what the heck all right so different places different strokes you know i guess very much so. another, uh, another acronym that i that i like you saying that san francisco can't call them felons have you heard the new term for pedophiles that we're now supposed to call them max? oh my gosh yeah, yeah that's that. the I, minor I, attracted called, persons. Yeah, yeah, that was a professor. Was it like Vanderbilt or something like that, or somewhere not not unknown? I can't. Yeah, remember no, the, it was a major university. Yeah, I just saw that he he was suspended for that. I guess he did some sort of a talking yeah. about a book or something of essentially defending pedophiles. Yes. Uh, yeah, I don't think it was university. Yeah. I think it was high school. No, no, it, no, it was it, it was a university for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, like I said, I'm almost positive it's like Vanderbilt or something. I mean, it was a a, a big major university. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's not kind that's of an upside insane. upside down world. I don't know if this is too political. Uh, I don't I don't think it is. But what where what are your feelings watching like the rest of us uh, from the outside about the Kyle Rittenhouse trial going on? You know, I, I'm just being blatantly honest, I haven't sat and followed the trial. So obviously, any of a, anybody who's been in a courtroom, you know, you know the importance of hearing all the evidence, blah, blah, blah. Um, when I saw the very, when it very first happened, the video of him running down the street, being chased, and then turn around and shooting the people. I remember back when I was in the police academy, uh, an instructor of ours by the name of Jim, Jim Clark, highly uh, respected guy. 
uh, is actually an NTOA board member and so forth. He was from our police department. One of the things he talked about, about using deadly force, um, you know, different times you can use it besides the basic, you know, someone's pointing a gun at you type of deal was multiple adversaries. And I, I remember that, that wording to a T from 1997. And what I saw there was someone who was running from a group of people being chased, um, you know, was facing multiple adversaries. And when we went down, obviously one person, the gun, the skateboard, we know all that. When I first saw that thing happen right away, I said, that's self-defense. Um, even before the charges were filed. Now, that's just what I saw in the video, right. you know, not knowing all the ins and outs. I think because of the political climate in our country and the division, both between politics and race right now, um, I think you take that exact same scenario. Not a single thing has changed about it, but you change the race of Kyle Rittenhouse. I think all the people that are out there protesting that want him guilty um, flip the other side. Yeah, if that makes sense. Um, and, I you know, think so, yeah. and that was and sorry, Eric, to cut you off. Exact same thing, I think, goes back to the deal in Columbus, Ohio, kind of like we were talking about LeBron James, where the next, you know, where, the, where that officer shoots the black female who's going to stab another black female. Yeah. Changed absolutely nothing in the scenario, because that's how we in law enforcement look at things. You know, the law, you take that female that's got the knife, make that somebody, a white guy wearing a MAGA hat, for instance. And then everybody's hailing that police officer as a hero <laughs> for shooting that guy, you know, for shooting, shooting that person. And, and that's wrong. And that's wrong on both sides, obviously. Um, you know, and, and just unfortunately, that's where we as, you know, a lot of people in our country are at right now. It's weird times that we're living in. Um, I don't know. Since you don't try to follow the trial, there has been some breaking news that uh, that the prosecution obtained some drone footage, um, which there's some controversy on how they obtained it there, you know, leaked anonymously, what, whatever. Um, and so that was brought up a while ago. But recently, now it has been discovered as of yesterday that the that the prosecution gave the defense uh, a very low quality version of that drone footage. Um, and now the new drone footage has come to light and it really looks bad for the prosecution because it shows Rittenhouse running away from that first assailant Rosenbaum and then uh, having to get in, involved in the shooting to begin with, which was big, big news because the original footage was so retarded. And, and I'm saying that as in they retarded the footage to trick or to deceive the jury. And that has now mm -hmm. come to light. The judge, everybody's kind of blown away by this. I see that as extremely morally, ethically dangerous uh for the prosecution to even attempt to do something like that and, and i would like to know how both of you guys feel but i kind of feel like that is a blatant kind of like manipulation of evidence on the prosecution side and i for one think that if we're looking for real justice that somebody should be punished for that and i know we all play games in court right we you know we've seen this happen but this sure. kind of goes to a new level of of manipulation yeah, for sure there's uh, definitely gate i mean it, a lot of times you know prosecutors and defense attorneys they're gonna go shake hands and play golf afterwards you know yep. it's like hey we each have our jobs to do and we're gonna do our jobs within the bounds of the law and in the rules of the court all that stuff this seems to be a glimpse into a system right now that is just um man politically driven and who knows like i don't i don't know i don't know enough about the the law world um to know can can this guy, can this prosecutor be disbarred uh, for doctoring evidence and presenting different evidence, doctoring that evidence to present to the jury? I don't know. Do you know anything about that, uh, Sean? No, I mean, I, I would make an assumption. Yes. I mean, at the very, you know, I, I would say at the very least, um, you know, there'll be <laughs> an ethical investigation, uh, you know, into the attorney if that's in fact, uh, you know, what's happened. So, you know, you think about it from for us as you know, police officers, anytime you take the stand and the defense attorneys that come after you for, you know, are you withholding any evidence? Or is this, did, did my client actually, you know, did he say this? Well, why isn't that in the report? You know, that type of stuff. And that's essentially the same type of thing. Um, you know, it sounds like that's gone on right here. Now, I haven't watched the news at all. I, I'm, I'm pretty anti-news. and That's really hard right. to do podcasts when you don't watch the news at <laughs> all. Um, but I have had an earpiece in. for Not the if last... you do what Cocktails and Cocktails does and you just avoid it. You just talk about stories and drinks, uh, man. Listen, I, I need to get I, I need to like send you guys uh, some cocktail recipes, some like easy, super fun cocktail recipes that make you guys look like super ballers that are Do like it. super easy peasy that your your cast your listeners will be like, damn, that's cool as shit. That's and that took them like stuff. three seconds. But <laughs> um, 
Yeah, uh, but I've been listening to the trial in my earpiece um, and not hearing anything from what, what your side of the news has to say. But I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. One, this is the most entertaining trial I've ever ha- forced myself to listen to. But two, it, it's almost outrageous. Like, it's, it's almost like, how did, how did our court system get to this? I knew it was bad when I was a cop and I've seen some crazy shenanigans in court. But this is almost like, are you doing it on purpose? Are you doing this for TV likes? Or are we getting when like – When your likes? closing argument has a clip from the movie Roadhouse – in it. Come yeah. on, man. We have jumped the shark, what? I think. <laughs> well, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that's, you know, so basically what I do when I go to bed at night, I get on my laptop. I, I literally, what I do is I click on the, my local news. I'll read through there. And I do, I click on Fox News and I read headlines and I go to CNN and read headlines just to see both sides. And that's kind of what I do when I go to bed. And, but just talking about some of the stuff in this trial, you know, I just saw that, you know, a freelance photographer was just arrested for following the juror van. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, yeah. afterwards that, you know, even for me and from my understanding, the prosecutor, when he's demonstrating the rifle, from my understanding, <laughs> he's pointed directly at the jury. And you look at the still shot, his finger is in the trigger guard. And it's Bol- the bolts you know, forward triggers on yes, the face. Fi- I said, I <laughs> and I said, why is the bolt not open? Why is not a piece of, you know, a, a plastic something, something sitting hanging through the magwell? Yeah. Yes. And, and so I was just looking and, you know, and, and people were talking about, you know, gun safety and stuff like that during that deal or the recklessness. Listen, I personally fucking 17 year old kids shouldn't have been out there with the damn rifle. I mean, I'll say that all day long sure. to anybody. You yeah, know, they're, 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 yeah, yeah, absolutely. But like I said this, you know, they're, you're sitting there pointing a gun at somebody with your finger in the trigger guard. I'm like, what is going on here? It's just, uh, yeah. <laughs> While, yeah, while like, lecturing like, the jury on reckless, reckless use exactly. of a firearm. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, like it's like me going over to my older son. I'm like, did you take your younger brother and slap him like this? Shapow! And I, you know, full smack him. Is that what you did? Are you telling me that you smacked him just like this? <laughs> just like, you know? Yeah, that's yeah. a pretty pretty accurate analogy. All right, before you take off, Sean, we've had a few people in the comments ask about if you ever had any experience with First Amendment auditors. I, I had never really had that at all, but did you? No, never. Um, you know, we had a couple of um, guys in the gangster world that were, uh, God, what's the, what was the, the, the little group they claim? You know, stuff these, they, they were gang members that we had known that went to prison, get sucked into whatever it is in the prison sovereign system, citizens. and then come out. Sovereign yeah. citizens, the Moorish. Sovereign citizens type stuff. Morris, there you go. Morris Nation. Yeah, just yeah. A, just a couple of those guys. And it's the same thing. It's like, whatever, dude, we've been through all this. Either give me your license or, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah. it's like, I don't yeah. get into the debates with, with, with any of the guys, but it was very, very few times, uh, that I personally really had to deal with it. How long have you not been a cop now? Man, I just retired in May. So I retired oh. in May of this year. Um, and you I retired as just, a lieutenant? I did. Yep. Uh, That's amazing. So I, I want to salute you on that. I've always said, and on the show and, I, and I'm so thankful that, that you retired as a lieutenant. I always say that like, once you pass yeah. lieutenant, you're getting into that world of politics and you're probably, you're probably a good cop at one time, but you have kind of sold your soul. And if you make it past captain, you've definitely sold your soul. So <laughs> being that you're a lieutenant, you're not in that category and we could be friends. <laughs> Thank you, sir. No, Hey, listen, I vouch for that because uh, I, 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 I was promoted to actually our department changed our rank system. I was a sergeant up until like a year ago. They just made all sergeants, lieutenants, all corporal sergeants. We got rid of the corporal rank is uh-huh. what our department did. So um, sergeant, lieutenant, one and the same, whatever. But I was promoted in 2005. And so I stayed there for 16 years. And I, from my own superiors, the chief of police, everybody's like, man, why don't you promote up? Why don't you promote? And I, it never one time crossed my mind every time that test came around each year. I had zero desire to get into the admin politic world of policing. Not that you wanted it, but you've got uh, like mad points from, from me. Uh, Thank you, sir. I, I, Highly respectful. Th- respectful. Well, Thank you. you're a that's you're awesome. a ma- you're a major uh, in my book. I don't I don't know like that's really high up, right? Major. Yeah, you're you're yeah, a ma- you're a major to me. I'll view yeah. you that like yeah in my like personal me- life. Like a Mexican general. That's what I want to be. With all <laughs> I, the I salute you. Down. Yes, thank you. <laughs> oh, that's uh, that's Eric Carter. Eddie's, man. Eddie's. <laughs> yeah, uh, Eric Carter and his stolen valor. That's the deputy. Superintendent of Chicago. <laughs> yes, all yes. The way up, all the way Someone up. else asked if you if you would ever consider starting a podcast. Uh, I don't. They said with your live PD co-host. I don't know if he's talking about Dan. Uh, is, has that ever come up? You guys have anything in the works where you guys might partner together on something? So, we're, like I said, he's got his show, the Dan Abrams Live, and I'm on there. There's some nights I'm on there all five nights, 
during the week. Uh, some nights it's two or three, just kind of depending on what he has going on, what I have going on. So we are definitely trying to keep the thing going. Um, he actually owns the Law and Crime Network, or okay. uh, that that name, and so that's who my podcast is done through. Um, you know, Dan helped me out with the book that I wrote about falsely accused police officers. Um, mm-hmm. I partnered up with him, so he and I are we're, we're still good personal friends. Um, I've been out there to see him a couple times. Um, you know, we, we keep in touch literally a couple times a week. Tom and I, we still keep in touch. He did his own little podcast thing for a bit. Um, I don't, I, there's no plans for he and I to, to, to do one together. And listen, Dan also does, that guy's a very busy guy. He hosts a live Sirius XM show five days a week in Jeez. addition to everything else he does. I saw so him last does, night on a 60 days in reunion show or something like that. Oh yeah, I yeah, yeah. I knew he did that. Yeah. So he's just, he's got a lot of stuff going on and he keeps himself busy and, and I'm trying to do the same. What What's the, uh, I see when you look up your podcast, which we're, we commend at all the, all the Wolfpack, go, go listen to cocktails and cocktails. But, um, I see it says presented by whiskey Raiders. How does that relate to law and, uh, the law and crime network or what's, whis- what's whiskey Raiders. So, so whiskey Raiders is a, um, kind of like an aggregate group that reviews bourbons, basically whiskeys. Um, and they kind of take a look at everything else that's out there. They do their own review and they just put it out. And uh, Abrams is a, he owns a winery. Um, you know, he, he's big into the spirit world and, and, and so forth. And so he has connections to the Whiskey Raiders group as well. Sweet. So That's cool. Made- he's, uh, Sean, yeah, I, I'm like a huge wine guy. I'm a certified specialist of yeah. wine. Started working way through the sommelier program now. I have a distillery in it. Awesome. And a distillery thing. Sommelier. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, beverage is like my my deal. So uh, I, just, I love all of that thing. And the Whiskey Raiders, that's that's extremely cool. We know that you have to go. Thank I you do. for coming on our show. You look wonderful. My pleasure, today. guys. You look Thank great. You. Lighting was perfect. <laughs> just, just rolled out of bed, guys. That's how, that's how, he, that's how he does <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> when the major's around, you know, everybody else has to not look as good. Have fun in Nashville, brother. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks for coming on, dude. We appreciate Anytime, you big time. Let's do it again. Have for sure. Uh, that was fun, Mike. Yeah, was man. Fun. Sean's, a, Sean's a great guy. He's one of those people where uh, you never, you know, I, I've, I've, I've had the opportunity to come across a lot of different people that are, you know, notable on social media or, you know, well-known in, in their respective fields. And sometimes... Uh, I'll just say this, they're very disappointing with when you when you kind of get to know them a little bit, you realize that they're they're definitely playing the game like they they yeah. convey themselves one way on social media and in reality they're not. And I, I I've uh, when I went on their podcast um, and I've, I've been talking to him since uh, he's he's just been one of those people where. That that's why I wanted him on the show because he's he's a kind of person that is the same. He he is who he is, and he's he's pretty unapologetic about it. And I, I just really appreciate him. So he reminds you of yourself. That's what he's a lesser version of me, essentially. Of now listen, did you call that guy on your Mint Mobile? <laughs> I I oh I think we did. I think we did, uh, did use the you Mint Mobile. Talk it over on the, right? on the Mint yeah. Mobile, and listen, we're gonna we're gonna get into some heavier topics here in a second. But uh, our call-in shows on Tuesday nights brought to you by mint mobile um we absolutely i mean listen mint mobile has been saving my tail this whole series like once they came on board i didn't know anything about mint mobile and i have used my mint mobile phone more now i'm almost about to switch from my big my big provider full on over to mint mobile and i'm going to do two phones because two phones at 15 dollars a month each is still way less than what I'm paying right now. But this holiday season, the best deal in wireless can only be found at Mint Mobile. Right now, when you switch to Mint Mobile and buy any three-month plan, you'll get another three months for free. As the first company to sell premium wireless service only online, online only. They're the first guys to do this, right? So there's no there's no retail stores, which cuts out all that crazy retail price. They mm-hmm. let Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone, pl- with phone plans starting at just $15 a month. I've been using Mint Mobile long before the the holiday deal. Like they they came on with us back in uh, I think it was August, um, and it is now is the perfect time to to switch. If you're going to be traveling, I have got more Mint Mobile service. It's just obscene. We were at a tailgate the other week, and it completely screwed. Um, and the Mint Mobile phone was the only phone that worked. Um, and I, I'm fully bought into this Mint Mobile at at this point because Ryan Reynolds is literally sitting sitting there at a desk making sure it works. 
By the way, that new Ryan Reynolds movie is is really dope. The one with The Rock in it. If you haven't seen that yet, um, I haven't. I haven't. But seen uh, it but look, man, if you're spending hordes of money on your your wireless provider, and I've had the same wireless provider since I was 22, 30, uh, 37 now. I, I I am definitely full on switching completely over to Mint Mobile, even if they drop us as uh, as sponsors. I'm. It's still just such a great deal. But Mint Mobile's best offer of the year is here for a limited time. Buy any three month plan and get three more months free. By going online only and eliminating the traditional cost of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. All plans come with unlimited talk to text, high speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. With Mint Mobile, choose the amount of monthly data that's right for you and stop paying for data that you never use. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just $15 a month for a limited time. Buy any three-month Mint Mobile plan and get three months free by going to mintmobile.com slash wolfpack. That's mintmobile.com slash wolfpack. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash wolfpack. And listen, being a cop, right, you've got to have that extra phone. If you're working with CIs, if you're working with, uh, you know, you're doing uh, uh, gun buys or you have a squad that just needs to get a phone to get up with suspects or victims, ten, car wrecks, right? We're always having to call victims and car wrecks trying to figure out what's going on. Don't be giving out your regular phone. Grab you one of these mm-hmm. Mint Mobiles, fifteen dollars a month. Keep that in your pocket. You don't have to worry about losing it, losing all your pictures, your all your family, or, or, or you know, Lord forbid, getting shot in the breast pocket and it breaks your phone. You know, grab that Mint Mobile phone, baby. Yeah, man, having a having an extra phone for work, it might seem like uh, an expense, but uh, yeah, until you end up in a courtroom and they're like, they want your phone for evidence, <laughs> and you texted you texted yep. a suspect or you texted a, a victim from your phone. For whatever reason, or you took pictures at a crime scene, and like if you if you used your phone to be like, oh well, ah, man, I don't want to drive back to the station to get this camera or whatever else, and you snap a photo and send it to the DB uh, from your personal phone, that shit's gonna go into the record, and they're gonna have your phone, and whatever's in it, it's coming out, and it, it could be a problem for you uh, unintentionally. Yeah. So never no bueno there. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, get your squad pitch in, man. Five bucks each person a month. You got your own squad phone. You can take care of all your confidential informant BS, all the things, man. Like, I, the, seriously, I love. I, I truly, truly, when I say this, I do love my Mint Mobile phone. So. Giddy up, giddy well, hey, up. Uh, but speaking of uh, evidence, do you want to talk any more about this written house stuff? Because I mean, honestly, talk, I think we can it's talk about really, whatever you want. We got a few. T- we got a few minutes to to kill. I mean, we, we've got the written house. Del- the deliberation is still going on today. I, I predict that they have a verdict today. Like, I don't see them going any further on this. Um, some of the research I've, I've done, and I'll get your take on this, but uh, if you watch mainstream media, if you take a look at mainstream media, um, you know, they're going to talk about if, the, if you're deliberating too long, it's usually bad for the defense or it's bad for the prosecution. All these guys are just talking out of their ass on what they want to see what happens to generate strife, <laughs> to generate things, because sure. none of that is true. And um, Mike, I'll get your take on that, but I'll read some stats here in just a second on on exactly what happens with deliberation time. Uh, well, my take is I think that the longer it goes, I mean, first of all, it shows, I mean, I think these things are undeniable. One, it shows that it wasn't like a unanimous not guilty. Like, the the jury didn't walk out of the courtroom at the end of the trial and say, "I'll sit down, get their uh, get their Wendy's at the table, uh, or whatever they ordered that day, uh, courtesy of the taxpayer, and sit down and go, well, uh, everybody on the same page. Yep, everybody's like, well, yep, not guilty. All right, let's uh, finish our lunch and head back in. That it's obvious that that didn't happen. Otherwise, right. we would have a verdict. Um, it's." If they were going, if they were really close to guilty, I think that we would have already had the verdict because they would have hashed out a few things, clarified what they need to clarify, and be done with it. So, what I take this to be is that they are, there's some, there's some people that disagree and they are not going to change their mind. I can't, I cannot imagine. 12 human beings with any sense of reasonableness and um, seriousness to their job as a jury, I cannot imagine all 12 of those people saying that he is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. 
Some people right. may be saying that. So I think that what's happening is there's definitely people who are saying he's not guilty, period. End of story. Not moving, not budging. You can show me all this evidence again. I can see it 18 more times. Not guilty, not guilty, not guilty. Even if there's some people on there saying, well, look at this, though. I think he could be – I think we could find him guilty on a lesser charge or whatever. And I think it's going to be a hung jury, and I think there will be a mistrial. Yeah, or not a hung yeah. jury or a – so a mistrial or um, the judge will step in and and issue a mistrial you know, with or without prejudice, but – yeah, and he the judge spoke on that yesterday. Um, it's it's really funny though because mainstream media, you know, you can definitely tell now that I've I've done so much research on my own, I've really learned that like each one of these mainstream media guys, they're literally just saying what they want you to hear, but not what's actually truthful. So if we just go like, who gives a shit if he's he's guilty or not guilty? I I pull, totally pull that card on whether I think he's guilty or not guilty. But let me read you the facts. Of what exactly a deliberation timed takes. So, a matter of fact, one uh, one lawyer that I was reading his blog on his personal lawyer site, he stated that if he knows that his his defendant is guilty of something, he really does not want the jury to go home. Period. Because what are the chances that all seven jurors don't listen to the radio on, on their way home and, and catch outside opinions? But most, like more importantly, is what what are the chances that out of those seven jurors, one of them doesn't go and look up this guy's other criminal history? So, is if my defendant has too many DUIs, or this is like his third or fourth DUI, and they the jury doesn't know that yet, what are the chances that one of them goes home and accidentally hears that? Yeah, this guy's got like three other DUIs, and they're like, oh well, fuck, I'm not even on the fence anymore. This guy's guilty. So this guy is saying he does not want the jury to go home because it's oftentimes if he does, their defendant will be found guilty because they'll read into his criminal record. Now, Kyle Rittenhouse doesn't have a crazy criminal record that, that the jury can, can go in and look at, so that's it's it's out. But a Minnesota jury deliberated in a little over 10 hours before convicting Derek Chauvin. It's less than 10 hours, they came up with, uh, with a guilty plea. Um, but it took four days to find Paul Manfort guilty, uh, two and a half hours to find Eddie Ray Ruth guilty of capital murder, 35 hours over nine days, a California jury acquitted actor Robert Blake of killing his wife, Bonnie Lee Baker. Um, and then uh, was that Bonnie? Yeah, Bonnie Lee. And then, uh, you know, obviously we know what happened with the O.J. Simpson trial. That was less than four hours and they acquitted him. Um, 20 hours. The glove didn't fit. You must to convict quit. Sandusky. Seven days for uh, to convict Scott Peterson. Eight days, eight days before acquitting. Dallas County Commissioner John Willie Price of bribery and mail fraud. So really, there is absolutely no data. No, no it's hard and serious. fast. It's all so over the board. Yeah, it's all over the board. But we can all go on opinions and things like that. Um, and I think if you look at this trial, especially now that we have what the judge is saying, and now that the judge has released this high definition camera that's from a drone, this drone footage that he's allowed the the jury to look at that. I think once they see the high definition drone footage, not guilty all day long, because that was the one questionable piece of about evidence provocation, right? About yeah. provocation. You, I mean, that's aggressively Rosenbaum chasing down Rittenhouse. Rosenbaum throws a bag at Rittenhouse. Rittenhouse tries to run. He aggressively chases him down, pins him between two cars, and then the shots are fired. Uh, it, it is clear cut. It's a beautiful film. The fact that the prosecution gave the blurry film first and didn't let anybody know that there was an HD film, I still stand. Yeah, Honestly, that's, I think that's, that's, that's shady, that. dude. That's that's so Fine shady. Or whatever, disbarred. I don't know. Something. Yeah. But that is. I, uh, Shady. People people are saying in the comments too about juries. I, I it's a weird time to be a to, to be a jury to have our to have our system in our modern times is very very weird, right? Because it would have been very difficult when the uh, the way that we've structured our criminal justice process for criminal prosecution with a trial by jury of your peers, etc. When that was when that was formed, you could you could go home and not hear the news, right? Like you could you could actually keep yourself apart from that. TV wasn't a thing. The internet was uh, uh, in the in the very distant future. And now, how can you how can you not have a jury that is not going to be taintable so easily um, with information? I mean, it's information overload everywhere you turn. And how are you going to keep that jury from that information without being sequestered? But then it's like, well, how do you ever get a, a jury if 
if you have to be put up in barracks and completely <laughs> separated from the new, like then who's who's going to answer honestly on the stand about objectivity? They're not. They're gonna they're gonna throw it because they don't want that. They don't want that kind of interruption in their life. So it's yeah, a weird for, for it's a weird it's like- time. Two weeks without my kids, without having to worry about podcasting and responsibilities. All I got to do is stay in a hotel room and not have TV. Dude, I'm game. I'm all in. Like, put me on the jury every time, baby. <laughs> just kidding. But no, I professional I jurors. Like, that's his career. Yeah, you just yeah. become a juror, and it's all, all you do is listen to trials just and make decisions. <laughs> I put me in a cabin in the middle of nowhere with no internet. I'm fucking fine. Take away my Mint Mobile phone. Just go dark, man. <laughs> yeah, go dark. But I, I like your point, though, of, of, uh, you know, being a tainted jury. And, and I, you know, I, a lot of people belittle juries or they, they say like, oh, juries are, retor- are stupid or dumb or whatever that they want to say about juries, but ju- jury, people on their jury really take things serious. And you've got some really serious people. You have business owners, you have people from all sorts of, of, of professions of all levels at, at all ranges of money and, 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 you know, your responsibilities at home and, and throughout the board. So, you know, generally speaking, juries are very responsible human beings and they are smart and intelligent people. And I think if you're put in a situation where you've got to choose the fate of somebody's life, I think if I'm on a jury, I'm like, look, I'm about to put this guy, a fu- I, I could put this kid away for life. Or what if it was a death penalty situation? Like, I'm like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm going to go home and I'm going to do all my research. I don't give a shit about being sequestered or give a shit what they say about I can't go do my own research. Like, I want to see who I'm putting in jail because if I'm putting a good person in jail for life for some bullshit, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. So I think I would be in that case, I would cheat the system because I would rather cheat the system than see somebody go to jail for life for something they did not do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think, I think I agree there. I would be more afraid of I would rather a piece of shit get off um, for being a piece of shit than a good human being going to jail for the rest of their life. And I police the same way. Like I, I, yeah. I really, really wrote my my reports fairly and, and collected my evidence fairly because literally one of my biggest fears in life is I do not want to go before Jesus uh, after I die and him be like, yo, did you out of ego or out of your own self want or whatever it is, did you? Did you retard that information so that this guy goes to jail for life? Because if so, have fun in hell. <laughs> <laughs> wait a second. Wait, no. I can explain. I a lot of good things, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you ever watch our show? We did so okay, many good well, things. You're just going to do 80 years in hell. You're right. I'll just give you 80 years. <laughs> you no bitch back. life. Go to there for life. Huh. Well, man, it's going to be interesting to see uh, see if a, a verdict emerges today or, or what's going to go on. Nuts, man. Nuts. Uh, yeah, well, I, mean, I, think, I don't think it goes any further to, to today. I don't think those jurors want to. I don't think those jurors want to to go the weekend without having without having this uh, resolved. We'll I wouldn't. See. If I was a juror, I wouldn't want to go home. You know what I mean? You wouldn't want to go home. No, not 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 on a Friday. Not without getting this all behind me. Like I would be like, no, I'm not. I'm not going to have this way heavy on my chest oh, yeah. all weekend. Like, like I'm get it done. I'm deliberating today, getting it over with. We'll, you know, we'll deal with the consequences on Saturday. By Sunday, the smokers going, fucking pork butts on, pouring a glass of bourbon. Yeah, and I'm forgetting all about this. Um, someone brought up the Ahmad Arbery case that's going on right now, and I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't know a thing about the trial. I, I listened to some testimony from the guy who wielded the shotgun about 10 minutes of his, uh, of his testimony. Um, and that, that's all I've kept up with it. Um, we, we could probably um, that put that on the calendar and, and break down the Ahmad Arbery case. Um, I, I followed it when it happened, but I, I have not kept up with the trial. It was, it was only when I was starting to do research on the Kyle Rittenhouse trial that I saw that Ahmad Arbery's case was being tried as well. Um, so it's something that I think that if we're going to discuss intelligently, we have to uh, we got to do our homework a little bit uh, on that one. Oh yeah, I got to do a lot of research on on that case because I I know I didn't even keep up with uh, what originally happened. I'm kind of in in the dark on that one, but um, I know a lot of guys are upset about it, and I think we'll we'll probably break that down. Uh, Tuesday night though, we have the call in show. What do we have for uh, for Tuesday night night shift? We have anything we're yet? talking about yeah. chicks, yes. chick cops. Chicks with dicks. No. Uh, chicks. No. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, there's a, there's a street. Uh, it's, it's a big street, right? Like the, it's a highway, really, uh, called Dicks 
here in Metro Ooh. Detroit, D I X, and there's a strip club on there. And so the billboards are chicks on dicks. D I X. Yeah. That's, that's their advertising that's campaign. Nice. It finally yeah, got we, uh, taken down. I think enough parents uh, driving by the billboard were like, you know, I really am tired of my five year old yelling, uh, what's chicks on dicks uh, from the back seat? Can we please take this billboard down? And, uh, <laughs> And it eventually came down, but I don't know if it was because of, of lo- the lobbying of, of so many parents of kids who can read now or, or what was going on. We have a, but, we have uh, a park. It's called Dorothea Dix. And I always refer to it as Dorothy's Dix. And so like on the radio, if we ever got like a homeless vagrant or something that was trespassing and, and Dorothea Dix, I, I would like always try to throw it on the radio. Like, uh, can you go ahead and repeat that? Was that uh Dorothy's dicks. What's going on there? And they would be <laughs> get that message that says, knock it off, Tansy. Stop knock it. it Just off. stop it right um, now. Man, listen, I've got a tasting in Orlando. I'm in Tampa now, but I've got a, a tasting in Orlando, Florida tonight at four to seven. So if any of the wolf pack is in if you, Florida, if you hear uh, this to come over Regency liquor, Regency liquors in Orlando, Florida. I will be there from four to seven. Come meet me, taste some of my rum, buy some of my rum. Uh, Bring me a donut. I don't know. I don't care. Do whatever you want. We'll do a selfie. I don't care. But that, that's where I'll be today if, if anybody wants to stock me. Giddy up. All what right, guys. Got anything good this weekend? Uh, I've got, you know, just <laughs> got, I got real estate to deal with uh, this afternoon. And then hopefully uh, hopefully the weekend off. I'm doing a volunteer thing tomorrow. Uh, what, are we, what are we doing? We're filling. Uh, we ma- we're making yeah. meals for Haitians. Oh. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. It's called the it's called the big give. Um yeah. it's through through I think our church. The goal go is that. to do two hundred fifty thousand meals or something. Yeah, like a quarter million meals. It's really cool. Like you sit at this table and they have like a t- they'll they'll put you with a team of people at a table and everyone has a role and it's like a mix of like dried food and different things that they mix together and they can literally like pour it out add water, heat it up, and it becomes a, a, a full nutritious meal. And you can pack, like in a day, like a quarter million meals um, wow. the way that they do this and they ship them off. It's uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, so you're actually a good person time. in real life. You're actually a good person in real life, not just uh, just not on the social medias, but you actually do good yeah. things. For, for yeah, some, some, occasionally. Occasionally. Not, Got roped mind, into are you it. Gonna any, uh, are you going to do any jujitsu? I am. I am going to do that Saturday as well. Like I, I, I've been back on the mats this week after COVID, so that's been uh, it, it's been rough uh, getting beat up again uh, after having two weeks of literally not moving and probably my brain and body atrophied. And uh, so I've been back at it this week, and I will definitely do Saturday class for sure. Um, yeah. So I love love me the jujitsu's. Next week, we have Thanksgiving. Um, I don't know what our plan is. At. Just follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Facebook. We'll let you know what our, our plan is. We'll probably try to get a show out um, next week. But uh, definitely stay. If you're not following us on Instagram, if you're not following us on Facebook, do so now. If you are one of those 278 people watching us on YouTube, hit the like it. button. Button. Head over to iTunes. Give us a review. Give us the old five-star. We're, we're moving up on the charts, on the old iTunes charts. We're crushing it right now. Um, I'd love to go into Christmas and be trending back on iTunes, although I don't think that they're ever going to let us trend on iTunes again. I think we might have burned that bridge by just being so outrageous. <laughs> I have uh, no that idea. They actually, listen to the show, and they're like, look, these guys, we can't we can't put this pro-police stuff on the trending charts. Not when they're speaking truth like that. That is That is not what we do here in mainstream media. We do not spit truth like that. Uh, I had another question for you and I, I, so I, I forgot it. Um, something to do with, uh, with your weekend. Oh, Rittenhouse rye. There is actually a bourbon or rye whiskey called Rittenhouse rye way before this Kyle Rittenhouse trial. I was actually here in Florida. I was, tr- I'm trying to find Rittenhouse rye. Um, I'll have to, I'll have to swing by my bourbon spot and see yeah. if they have it. That's pretty cool. Rittenhouse <laughs> rye. It's pretty, pretty funny. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll cheers to that. If, uh, if we have a mistrial or hung jury or, uh, I think just based on principle at this point, I'm going to celebrate if the prosecution does not win, because I think that is shady. I don't like people who win under shady pretenses like that. I want to see you lose. Um, just fucking be transparent, be truthful and let justice run its course, man. Like give the evidence. 
I mean, how does a prosecution sleep at night knowing that that like their evidence show like what if that evidence showed that Rittenhouse was completely innocent, which I think it does show that, and they are guilty of retarding that evidence to the point where he gets guilty. Like, how does a prosecution sleep with at night? Yeah, how, how does a person like that know that they they tainted evidence and that kid is looking at life in prison? Yeah, because not, yeah, they what? they cheated. Like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how people come to that place where that's that's how they approach life. Uh, like you must be just in the public fucking- eye. You know everyone is watching you, and you're still trying to do it. What? what that's like doing? a captain trying to make major, though. They'll do anything. They'll do anything oh to make it to major. Uh, these these attorneys will do anything to to keep moving their way up the political rankings or or their their way up the political ladder. Uh, that's my well, take Wolfpack. On that. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Uh, We got somebody in the comments that says his name is Brandon. His mom's name is Karen. He's torn. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Yeah, that's, I mean, Brandon is nothing to be ashamed of these days. Uh, So just look at your dad and go, let's go, Brandon. And then look at your mom and say, shut up, Karen. (laughs) All right. Your name is Brandon. And households of Brandon's and Karen's. Thanks for hanging out with us, guys. Failure to Stop podcast. Go to failuretostop.com to support us. Uh, support our sponsors. We appreciate y'all. Hope you enjoyed uh, hanging out with Sticks with us. I know we did, and we will see you Tuesday night. Talk about chick cops. Nice.